Part 1. You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25 percent more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day, too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. OK. How about if I book a return date on the 29th? and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st. Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 6 to 10. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. OK, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly, student ID 92. One, two, three, zero, two, zero. Your phone number, please. Eight, seven, zero, five, two, one, zero, nine. Please tell me your mailing address. Three, five, four, Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now, just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of takeoff time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. That is the end of part one. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a teacher helping high school students visiting from an overseas school to fill in a school excursion permission note. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, students. My name is Mrs Brown and I'm in charge of the school excursion next week. Please take out your school excursion permission note so you can fill it in. For insurance purposes, this note must be signed by your guardian or the group leader. First of all, fill in the name of your class. Everyone here is in 3A, aren't they? So write 3A where it says class. We're going to the Blue Mountains, which is great. So this is the school excursion to the Blue Mountains. The day we leave is Monday. That's Monday, June 10. We are travelling by bus all the way, so we don't have to worry about changing trains or anything like that. The bus will leave from the front gate at 8 a.m. I know we usually use the side gate, but because of the roadworks, we will be using the front gate when we leave. However, when we return, the roadwork will be complete, so we'll use the side gate. We expect to be back at 6 p.m. It's going to be a lovely day. Your teachers will give you tasks to do when we arrive. We'll provide fruit and fruit juice on the bus but you must bring your own lunch. While we're on the excursion, we'll be moving around a lot in some fairly rough country. Be very careful to wear strong shoes. It's very important that you look after your feet very well. Now, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. No questions? OK. I'd just like to fill in a few more details. The bus should arrive in the Blue Mountains at 11am. We'll have time to do the first of our tasks before lunch. The bus is not a new one, but it does carry one piece of special equipment, a first aid kit. I certainly hope we won't have to use it, but it's nice to know it's there in case we have a medical emergency. The other class on this excursion is 3B, so I know it'll be a good day. The last time 3A and 3B went out together was a thoroughly successful excursion. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between two students, Rosie and Mike, and a university tutor. In the first part of the discussion, they're talking about a survey they have conducted on local entertainment. First, look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen to the first part of the discussion, and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Good morning, everyone. Well, I think we can start straight away by getting Rosie and Mike to do their presentation. Would you like to start, Rosie? Yes. Well, um, we've done a survey on local entertainment. Basically, we tried to find out how students feel about the entertainment in the town, and how much they use it. Yes. So we've called our project "Out and About." Yes, that's a good title, "Out and About." We wanted to find out how well students use the entertainment facilities in town, whether they get to see the latest plays, films, that kind of thing. Now we have our own facilities on campus, of course. Oh yes. We deliberately omitted those, as we really wanted to examine outside entertainment in the town, as opposed to on the university campus. Actually, there were a lot of areas to choose from, but in the end, we limited ourselves to looking at three general categories: cinema, theatre, and music. Right. Okay. Well,、uh, first of all, cinema. In the town, there are three main places where you can see films. There's the new multi-screen cinema complex, the old park cinema, and a late-night Odeon. So, if you look at this chart, in terms of audience size, the multi-screen complex accounts for seventy-five percent of all cinema seats. The park cinema accounts for twenty percent of seats, and the late-night Odeon has just five percent of seats. As you probably know, the complex and the park show all the latest films. While the late-night cinema tends to show cult films, so when we interviewed the students, we thought the complex would be the most popular choice of cinema. But surprisingly, it was the late-night Odeon. Yeah, and most students said that if they wanted to see a new film, they waited for it to show at the park because the complex is more expensive and further out of town, so you have to pay more to get there as well. Yes. And that adds to the cost, of course, and detracts from the popularity. Evidently. Well, next we looked at theatres. The results here were interesting because, as you know, there's a, a theatre on campus which is popular, but there's also the stage theatre in town, which is very old and architecturally quite beautiful. And there's the large modern theatre, the Ashtop, that has recently been built. So you just looked at the two theatres in town? Yes, but the thing about the theatres is that there's a whole variety of seat prices. Also, the types of performance vary, so students tend to buy seats at both and like using both for different reasons. And if they want cheap seats at the Ash Top, they can just sit further from the front. What we did find that was very interesting is that there are periods during the year when students seem to go to the theatre, and periods when they go to the cinema, and we really think that's to do with budget. If you look at this graph, you can see that、um, there's a peak around November, December when they go to the theatre more, and then a period in April, May when neither is particularly popular. And then、uh, theatre viewing seems to trail off virtually, while the cinema becomes quite popular in June, July. Hmm. I think you're probably right about your conclusions. In the second part of the discussion, Rosie and Mike talk about different music clubs. Look at questions twenty-seven to thirty first.
Listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, lastly, we looked at music, and this time we were really investigating the sort of small music clubs that offer things like folk or specialise in local bands. So not musicals as such? That's right. We looked at three small music venues and we examined the quality of the entertainment and the venue and gave a ranking for these. A cross, meaning that the quality was poor, a tick, meaning it was OK, and two ticks for excellent. First of all, the Blues Club, which obviously specialises in blues music. This was a pretty small place and the seating was minimal, so we didn't give that a very good rating. No, we don't recommend that one, really. Then the Sansu, which plays a lot of South American music. It was a big place, very lively, good performers, so two ticks for that one. The Pier Hotel is a folk venue, a good place for local and up-and-coming folk artists to play. Not the best of venues, as it's in a basement and a bit dark, but the quality of the entertainment was reasonable and the lighting was very warm, so we felt it deserved an average rating. Now, finally, there's the Bald Rock Cafe, which features big rock bands and is pretty popular with students, and we enjoyed ourselves there as well, so top marks for that one. And then, did you get any information from the students as to which of the clubs they preferred? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. We'll hear a speech by the Student Union Vice President for Finance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now you will hear the speech. Hello. As VP Finance, my job is to oversee the spending of our grant to ensure that all areas of student union activity run efficiently and smoothly, without any financial headaches. I have a thoroughly efficient finance team Ursula, Ella and Henrik. We are all here to help you as best as we can. Remember that even though I administer the union's finances, it is ultimately you who has the final say in expenditure policy, either directly, through the democratic process of the general meetings, or by voicing your opinions through the Executive Finance Committee. I would like to take this opportunity to thank last year's VP Finance, Martin Curry, for his excellent work in improving the financial running of the union to what it is today. Finally, remember to enjoy yourself and to use the union facilities and services to the full. And if you're still not satisfied, come and let us know why. Extra note, in order to maximise my time as VP Finance and to give a more efficient service to students, the Finance Office will only be open to students from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m.
The cashier's office will be open from 12 o'clock noon to 2 o'clock p.m. daily. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.